Hello, and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon Framework, Axon Server, and their ecosystem. I am your host and a software developer at Axonic, Sarah Tori. Opening a little bit of a parenthesis and changing the order of the release of the podcasts, I am going to actually delay the release of the third portion of the state and future of Axonic uh, for a very good reason, because I had a chance to speak with my colleague, Stephen Van Balen, who is the lead developer of Axon Framework, about one of the biggest features that was released in the last version of Axon Framework, which is the dead letter queue. And we talked about Dead Letter Queue and what it is and how to use it and why is it special in Axon Framework and so on. As Stephen is about to give a webinar on this specific topic with some um, code samples and uh, visuals on December 6th. So I wanted to have this conversation with him beforehand so that um, all of you wonderful listeners could have a really good idea of what it is and what to prepare for before that uh, webinar. I hope you enjoy this episode. We will come back to the last portion of the State and the Future talk at the next episode of the podcast. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Let's have a listen. Hi, Stephen. Kind of long time, no see. Glad to have you back. How are you today? Hey, Sarah. Yeah, this has been a long time that I've uh, had the chance to chat with you on the, on the podcast, right? It's been, uh, yeah, definitely. been a couple of uh, months almost, but... But but I have seen you before, right? Yeah. It's been, uh, what's, what's the, yeah, yeah. Good to speak to you. And which is always a good thing. Yes. But it's great to have you back. And today we're going to focus on the hot topic of the past, shall I say, year on the framework, which has been one of the, I guess, highly requested features that we um, were talking about. And you and the team released it in the um, latest version of Axon Framework, which is that letter Q. So with no further ado, let's yeah. talk about uh, the topic and uh, maybe let's start by first saying, what is uh, that letter Q? Yeah, no, I, I can do that. Yeah, this has uh, definitely been a thing we've been working on for quite some time. I think I started with it December last year and and uh, really coding wise, right? But yeah. the, the months before that, years before that, I guess we've already been discussing it. Uh, yeah, so uh, practical terms. What is a dead letter queue? So uh, a dead letter queue is a well, a queue to put your dead letters in. Huh, that's easy. No, that's a bit <laughs> mean as well. Uh, a a dead letter is a message that couldn't be received in practical terms mm -hmm. if you actually look it up. Now, yeah. we change it a little bit to a dead letter being a message that couldn't be handled. So the okay. receiving end for whatever reason, had problems with dealing with the message. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, that letter queue is a place to store those let that letters in. Uh, literally just a storage solution. It doesn't do any figuring out what to do with them. It expects gotcha. somebody else to come at a later stage to do something mm -hmm. with them if, if the need arises. Yeah. Oh. So it's basically the thing that holds the line. So just stop, <laughs> wait until we figure out what the problem is, and then allows the message uh, to be handled after that. Can you give exactly. me a couple of maybe uh, examples in uh, uh, practical, uh, I guess, um, way how that can happen? When would be a time a message can't be handled or, um, you know, something that would cause this, uh, this message that would stop or not being handled? Of course, yeah. Um... So see it from a perspective of message handling, which we, we do a lot with the framework, uh, right. of course, uh, with the tooling we have about. Um, if handling fails, I, I would expect a dead letter queue to kick in if it fails because of... Uh, so so failure is, is the key word here, but right. failure from the perspective of I cannot reach the service XYZ. The database is not connected. Or a programmer actually may... Uh, Made, introduced a bug into the setup and some scenarios break and some don't. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily use it if it's expected business validation. 
So right. if you're, uh, for example, if you're handling a command and you're, you invalidate that operation, you don't want that to happen, that might throw an exception. Well, that's not a scenario to dead letter that command message because it's going to fail the next time around too. But it's failures that you potentially can recover from at a later stage. Gotcha. And um, so a couple of examples that you mentioned then would be um, if, let's say, the database uh, for some reason is not connected or maybe um, the message has reached its uh, capacity, you know, uh, you can't you can't push anymore. So that that makes sense now. So that's in a general sense of what that other queue means and um, some of the examples of how it can happen. But what does it mean exactly for our use cases in Axon Framework and why did we build it in Axon Framework? Yeah. So why we build it? Yeah, it's it's been a discussion we well I've been having as well for for a number of years already. I, I've eventually also been explaining to users how they could potentially build this, uh, and and through that process we we kept thinking, okay, maybe we need to have this in the framework itself. The specific reason. Why is, well, the, the, when it comes to handling events specifically, let's, let's go jump on that bandwagon. Um, right. Events need to be handled in a certain order. You expect that order to happen as well. If, right. if you have a stream of 10 events and the fifth one fails, then there is a chance that handling the sixth one expects the fifth one to be handled. So sure. you don't want to handle the sixth one either. So that, that was always a, a tough caveat to, to relay to, to end users to say, okay, you need to build this, sure. Uh, you need to configure this. And there, there are dead letter tools out there, right? You, you already have yeah. those. But it's that specific scenario that was, well, a bit more difficult to grasp. And we could explain it, but it ju just didn't always, it wasn't as friendly as we'd like it to be. We just want people to well, focus on their business functionality, right? And building a dead letter queue is awesome. I, I really liked it, but it's not business functionality for a, a lot of end users. It's So can I make a parenthesis question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, how then, so you mentioned that uh, in the past, some users may have had this issue. And um, of course, there are tools out there that they can use and what have you. Uh, but... If somebody came across this multiple times and uh, they wanted to mainly focus on their um, business question and they didn't want to deal with uh, building mm -hmm. anything on their own, uh, which ended up for with us building it ourselves, which is great. But up until that point, can you tell me a little bit how uh, they would have handled this issue? Uh, the queuing of the messages that wouldn't go through for whatever reason. Um, would they, in that case, have to go back to their code base and change certain configurations and things like that? Or was it just a, a simple, hey, go use this tool? And I'm sure it wasn't that simple, hence the reason why we built it and yeah. spent so much time on it, right? No, <laughs> I'm oversimplifying it, it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there was definitely some handiwork they needed to do so that they had to implement, because it specifically comes from the space of failures, right? It's, like I pointed out, it's not necessarily a letter that couldn't be provided to anybody in our scenario that is but it's a, a a message that couldn't be handled a failure occurred so that would be a specific type of error handler you'd need to construct first so you'd actually need to build some code and then you need to configure it in the right places for it to actually work and then well they'd also need to have tooling to potentially understand that they need that sequence if they want to have subsequent events also to well for whatever reason, be dead lettered. Um, yeah. yeah, it was uh, a lot of cognitive load, I'd like to put it. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So now that um, we're at this point that uh, it is part of the framework and the users can use it, tell me a little bit what is special about it within our framework. No. Now, I, w I would literally say what, what I've been hinting on a little bit just now uh, is, the, is the ordering. The sequencing yeah so it's not we we don't call it a, a dead letter queue we call it a sequenced dead letter queue internally uh, i've been very deliberately not using that in 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 marketing material because it's it's a specific detail right it's yeah it's it's yeah. important detail but specific it is, important detail exactly yeah yeah people small just small but important but, 
<laughs> sequencing that letter Q, I just wanted that letter Q, yes, but we think you want to sequence that letter Q. What, what yep. it actually means is that the that letter Q implementation in Axon Framework is, uh, well, a queue of sequences. Right. So let's, let's go back to that example of we have a stream of events and uh, you have 10 events and the fifth one is ha fails and you know, or the sixth one expects the fifth one to be handled the chances are high that this is the case. For example, you have a, a query model, a projection that updates or uh, adjusts a certain uh, column in a database that needs to be inserted by the previous event. But if the previous one wasn't handled, well, the update can't happen. So you get another issue or you get missing model adjustments. So your, your model just portrays the wrong information at that stage. So we feel it's better to be eventually consistent for a bit longer. So to stall that entire sequence instead of still handling those. So our dead letter queue is really ties in to the event handling process. And whenever an event is handled, we'll first check, does this event belong to a sequence that is dead lettered? If yes, we'll add it to that sequence. Mm -hmm. And that is what it keeps doing. So yeah. you are safe that um, that you don't introduce more bugs because you're handling following events that are expecting previous events to occur. Gotcha. So does it um, then automatically retry to see if it gets processed? Or so the that's first, kind of the against what we solution. want to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first solution that, that I built did that, but mm -hmm. we had so many caveats in discussions about okay. when do you retry? For how long do you retry? At what periods do you retry? And okay. what information do you need to, do, to decide whether you want to retry, yes or no? So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I've been, there's a reason this took a year. <laughs> Getting <Yeah>. that API <laughs> to, a, to a level that we were happy with it and that it was sufficient enough that people can do whatever they need, whatever decisions yeah. they need to make, that was just tough. So. We, we entirely scrapped the automatic retry solution. Let's, let's be honest with that. There is still a means to invoke a retry, but you need to do it. So the configuration is in place that you can find your that letter queue uh, and you can tell it to retry specific letters based on a filter. So you want to retry all the failed sequences based on a null pointer exception or all the failed sequences between this time and this time or all the failed sequences that happened on that day. You, you can do predicates like that. And okay. that's the entire freedom to the end user. And, and the bit that's important in what I just said is it's retrying a sequence. So it's not just yeah. retrying single letters. It is triggering the entire sequence to be handled again. Exactly. Retry. Exactly. Because um, that's the whole point of um, having arrived to that uh, wherever state you are, because then it if you're retrying one letter as opposed to the whole sequence of them, then it goes out of sequence and it becomes out of order. Then you have a lot of issues. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you did mention this sequenced dead letter queue. So let me ask a question about the um, the queue implementation. And this is going to go a little bit abstract because we're going to talk a, a little bit about um, uh, what you can do within the code. So. In the reference guide, there's the in-memory sequence, that letter Q, and then you have the JPA sequence, that letter Q Correct. as well. Yeah. Can you talk about those and what the difference is between the two of them and when to use them and when not to use them? Gotcha. Um, well, the in-memory one is an in-memory variant, as you, you might have guessed. Yes. Um, <laughs> What is, what is particularly nice about that one is that it doesn't care about the type of message it handles. Mm -hmm. So this means you could, in essence, use it for commands, events, and queries. Okay. So that's how it's built up. That's how we well, wanted to build it at first. Mm -hmm. uh, well, however, it's in memory. So if you shut down your application, well, you it's lose gone. all those failures. <laughs> right. so that's, that's, yeah. that's not super ideal. Uh, definitely something you can use in testing scenarios if you like to. 
Uh, that's okay. definitely how we built it. We have an in-memory mm -hmm. variant for a ton of things in the framework. So there's an in-memory token store. There's an in-memory event store. There's an in-memory saga. St all the stores we have, there's an in-memory variant. So it just needs needed to be there. Yeah. Um, but for a real production scenario, I'd expect users to go for the JPA variant, which mm -hmm. is just the JPA-based one. But it is specified for events only. Gotcha. So it really only can deal with, uh, well, dead letter events, events and keeping yeah. that sequence and storing those. So now that you mentioned that, can we um, talk a little bit about event processors and the segments and everything um, that basically comes before uh, the whole topic of dead letter queue? Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of that and why did we choose to specifically use that letter Q for uh, events as messages as opposed to the other types of messages that you can use for with the in-memory uh, and for testing purposes, but not really in production? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, trying to think how I would relay this. So that there's a certain layering in the framework when it comes to the components. The, the really technical bits under the hood is the event processor that gets the events one way or another and invokes the processing groups, several right. it can have of those, uh, and gives the, the events to them, saying, okay, here are the events. It gives a certain layer of technical configuration. The processing groups, they have the event handlers, so the classes that users write, and they'll invoke them if they need those. And it's the processing group that is in charge of sequencing the events. Mm -hmm. So it is it is here where uh, it, it receives uh, what's called a segment from the okay. from the tokens you were referring to. And that segment deduces based on an event, do I need to handle this event, yes or no? Mm -hmm. If yes, then we'll proceed. Um, and it maintains a certain ordering between those segments mm -hmm. by segmenting the, the event stream. Um, and then you have your event handler. So this can be whatever a user writes to handle an event. Mm -hmm. The dead letter queue behavior is on the processing group level right. because we want to dead letter events in a certain sequence sure. based on that, that segment, really. The segment dictates yeah. if events belong to a certain sequence, yes or no. So we right. need to be on that level, having that segment information. Okay, these events belong here, yes or no. Mm -hmm. um, so the behavior of validating this event is already in a queue or is already has a sequence present in the queue, I'll store it. Or event handling failed, I'm going to store it in the dead letter sequence, mm -hmm. uh, in the dead letter queue that is done by a specific dead lettering processing group. That's right. what it's called. Makes sense. Um, the fact we built it for events up front is because, well, the request mainly comes from the events perspective. But yeah. in the design phases, we figured there might be a time and place somewhere in the future that mm -hmm. this might be valuable for commands as well. Because commands, if, if you cannot reach your destination when it comes to command handling, where you can't get the response back, those also might occur in a certain ordering if they're all targeted mm -hmm. towards the same aggregate. So sequencing yeah. failed commands also makes sense for yeah, queries we couldn't really deduce a scenario so likely mm -hmm. it would be well it, it, it would it make so much a sense lower level interface which we right well, which is easy to introduce but we don't have that um yeah. we already wanted to make the apis able to go that route but as it's not the most prevailing scenario for the end users well we we ended up with just building the event for Ryan for jpa because for the JPA-based storage solution, it was so much easier to know the expected message to serialize and store. Uh, yeah, that really outweighed the complexity you would introduce by not knowing that. Uh, for an in-memory yeah. one, you don't care. You just yeah, push it, it into a map or in a, in a list and or a queue to be exact, yep. and, and you're done. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Now, uh, you did hint storage. So yeah. let me ask you, where are the dead letters um, from the dead letter queue stored? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, either in memory, but I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> not in a production scenario. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. No, no, no. Uh, but typically they are in your database, and I would expect mm -hmm. them to be in the table next to the, well, where you're storing your query models or where you're mm -hmm. at least storing your tokens 
which typically gotcha. is also where you have your uh, query models because mm-hmm. you want to have to insurance that if you're handling an event, event handling fails, um, it moves into the queue, you still want to move over to the following event because that's the benefit. You don't stall event handling because of failures. You proceed because you, mm-hmm. well, stage the message for somewhere else. You still need to update the token or the segment to the new position. And that is a database transaction as well. So you both, mm-hmm. in one transaction, you want to store the dead letter and you want to transition the token. So I would expect the dead letter queue or the dead letter table. I think it's mm-hmm. a dead letter entry table. I'm not yep. 100% sure though. So please don't tie me down on the exact name. <laughs> it's, a de- it's, it's a table storing the dead letters. I would expect it to be inside your database. Yeah. And right now, gotcha. there's just a JPA variant. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, in, in favor of time, we wanted to get it out. I yeah. am right now working on a JDBC variant, which you can use nice. a JDBC API to store it in a database. Uh, we already have a Mongo variant done mm-hmm. in, in, the, yeah. in the Mongo extension, uh, but it's not released yet. So if, if you really want gotcha. to be on the bleeding edge, you can use a snapshot, if you like, of the, of the Mongo extension to play with that. Uh, yeah. But other than that, you need to wait a little bit until that's released. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Does it make any difference if you're using Axon Server as well? No, no. Okay. This is completely free of Axon Server. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> easy, easy. Short question. No, it doesn't make any difference, right? Great. <laughs> now, sometimes it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I like easy. Um, there was one thing that I was also um, looking up, and I was wondering about. There was a notion of. Um, Let's see if I can find it here on the on the reference guy as I was taking notes um, prior to to us talking about it, uh, which I believe was about um, events that are being processed uh, in parallel from the same aggregate. Am I t- am I completely talking nonsense here, or am I making <laughs> a bit more sense? Can we have in a, in a situation where events are uh, processed at the same time from or to the same aggregate? And then one is having an issue, so the dead letter queue uh, basically is implemented there, but not on um, the the parallel uh, segments that are going through. Does does that happen, or is that the reason why we have dead letter queue in the first place? So, so you can configure it for for the processing group because it's a specification yeah. for the processing group. So if you have um, um, let's assume you're uh, a flight app or a banking application and you have the, mm-hmm. the uh, bank accounts query model that you share, then there's likely a bank account processing group and you would configure it for a specific processing group. Mm-hmm. Um, so that processing group will handle likely all the events and mm-hmm. it may be segmentized to parallelize the load. And then it would automatically work for all those segments. It wouldn't, you you can't filter out for one segment, yes or no. It's just filtering based on processing group you can choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. because you're using the Delar queue on the processing level. That makes sense. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, Clear now. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, when the user can decide when to enqueue or not enqueue an event um, or Uh, series of events. (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, th- this was also one of the tougher bits to to figure out how we would provide this, because like like I was hinting on a little bit earlier, maybe you don't want to uh, insert a dead letter at all cases. Maybe you want to mm-hmm. have additional information when you insert a dead letter as well. You need to right. have some way to interact with the decision making of of adding a letter. Um, we have called this the NQ policy. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, well, it, it takes in the failure of, uh, of, a, of a dead letter. So it, it, it ingests that letter and it gets the exception. And based on that, you can return the decision, uh, very specifically an NQ decision. And that decision is then used by the, the specific dead lettering processing group to decide, okay, I'm going to enter this in a dead letter queue or I'm not going to enter this in a dead letter queue. Uh, the default one will just uh, enter a dead letter if a failure happens, if any failure happens. And it will stay in the queue until the failure was resolved. But you, you can configure this. 
So oh, nice. um, th there are scenarios where you might want to only dead letter on certain types of exceptions. So you filter out your own business exceptions from business validation, like you do with right. command handling that you don't want to dead letter. Uh, or you have retried this given that letter already five times. So that is information you would get in that NQ policy, seeing, okay, I've yeah. already retried this message a number of times. Maybe I, I don't want to retry it again. It's just, this is a lost cause, whatever will proceed. Um, th that's what the NQ policy combined with the NQ decision gives you the power of. Gotcha. Yeah, makes sense. Um, seems to me, um, as you're explaining it, it sounds easy, but I can I can kind <laughs> of imagine how it can be complicated if you're um, customizing it in a way, I guess, <laughs> to uh, yes. based on your business. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, that goes, I, I, really uh, hope... I think... Sorry, yeah. sorry for intervening there you, with you. I, I really hope that the reference guide is, is on point to explain how you would do this. I believe yeah. we have given a couple of scenarios in there as well of how you would change the NQ policy and how you can use it to return different decisions. So mm -hmm. I hope that's enough. Uh, yeah. If listeners Hopefully. think, okay, I'm missing some scenarios, just file an issue with us and we'll, we'll figure it out. Exactly, exactly. There are uh, several... Uh, code samples there as well. So hopefully Lovely. they're sufficient. But if not, then we'll either hear it through the Discuss platform or um, filing an issue. It's as always uh, the best way to go as well. Um, now let's talk about um, infrastructure components. Now, for which one of these inf uh, infrastructure components is there a dead letter queue support for in Axon? Yeah, the, the framework well. specifically. Yeah, yeah. I, I have already been hinting on this, of course, as well. That, that's always how it goes, right? There's a certain layering <laughs> in the messaging, but um, well, you're already explaining things. I can only be enthusiastic about this because I'm really happy about uh, about this feature, if I'm being very honest. I'm with so you. happy that you're excited yeah. about this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good to hear it's that. been a long time coming. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, For I know sure. exactly. It's been. Uh, Ooh, it's been quite a quite a birth, <laughs> we'd say in the in the Netherlands. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine just the weight off your shoulders uh, after you, yeah. the release of the framework. Like done yeah, exactly. with this part at least. Exactly. <laughs> um, so so right now it works out of the box for event handlers for processing mm -hmm. groups, right? Uh, with one caveat to the processing groups. And that's which I sagas. think exactly was going to be my next question. Sagas, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. No, it doesn't work for Sagas, uh, but uh, there is full fledged support for, for your processing groups that mm -hmm. you can configure a dead letter queue that you construct for a processing group. You can retrieve the components to retry based on a processing group. You can configure these NQ policies we've just been talking about based on a processing group or for all your processing groups, if you like. Um, right. Yeah. But but not for Perfect. sagas, even though a saga is also a processing group type. Dare I ask why? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think I know the why, why, but yes, yeah, yeah. please <laughs> tell us. No, it's a good question because we have been asked, and uh, I thought we had it in a reference guide right away, but there wasn't a caveat in there. Uh, yeah. The problem with sagas is that the the sequence of events, the order of events, can change. As a user you can deduce which events you want to associate with next or which you don't want to associate with anymore. So this entire idea of sequencing the, the, the events for you and for the saga that is, well, the transaction you're following, we, we, can't, we can't make that decision. We cannot know if the event that failed would have made an association with aggregate XYZ or with... Uh, external sy system foo, uh, we just don't know. So the entirety of sequencing your dead letters for you just doesn't work there. Uh, granted, we could just dead letter without knowing that, but then you would get the scenario again that you ha a dead letter one message and then the following one is handled, working on faulty state. Um, yeah, so... No, we, we haven't built it for the saga. And in all honesty, I don't know if we can. If we would. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not that I don't want to. If we find a way, I, I'd love to introduce it. But yeah, I don't know. At the moment. Well, if anybody has some ideas 
and they want to They're pitch in. They're more than welcome. <laughs> exactly. Please <laughs> open an issue or a, or a PR. That would be great too. Yeah. Um, one almost last question. I do have one after that, but um, <laughs> one other question. So if somebody is using dead letter queues um, with, within the framework and um, it's working great, how does the logging of the messages or error handling works um, within the framework? Uh, and is it something that they can customize on their end? What kind of information they can get from these logs or how does it exactly work? Well, that, that's also a good one. I, th I think I think this passed us some from from somebody recently, right? Yeah. So so we do some default logging. So mm -hmm. we we log when a when a that letter is enqueued. We we call it enqueue, hence an enqueue policy. Yeah. Uh, we we log when a dead letter was successfully handled. So then we evict it from the mm -hmm. queue, um, or we uh, re enqueue it if it fails again. Uh, so we log all those scenarios, but we don't log the full stack trace of an exception because if we would do that every time where you are potentially retrying a dead letter n times, you would be filling your logs with a lot of stuff. You get flooded. Oh, yeah. Honest, yeah, exactly. It might not be interesting to you. Yeah. Um, but if you still need that information, well... You, you need to go back to your in queue policy again mm -hmm. because what you can do on the decision it returns is describe what kind of additional information you want to add yeah. to the dead letter that is being stored. We've called this diagnostics. So that's a, in all honesty, it's just a metadata collection like we have for all the messages, uh, which can be anything. You can put anything in there you like as long as it's serializable. Um, so the, again, with the API design, the, the thought crossed our minds to have that full stack trace in there automatically. But as we all know, or assuming everybody is a developer, if you're not a developer, then you hear it right now. Stack traces can be, well, hundreds. I have seen them once for at least thousands of lines. Oof. You don't want to serialize all that data. That might yeah. not be valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you really need that, if you need that information, you can add that to the diagnostic information right. by defining a specific decision that mm -hmm. you return from your policy. Yeah. And I think it's we called NQ decision, which is yes, really exactly. specific, which I like. Yeah. 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 It's really the decision to NQ, an NQ decision mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to, the, to say, okay, I want to NQ this le that letter with these diagnostics. Right. Um, we could have built this up front as well with retry information, because mm -hmm. retry information would also be something you would do in the diagnostics, which we do not do by default. So be mindful of that. We don't by default add, you have retried this n number of times, which goes back to us not being capable to know what your decisions are going to be. We don't know what kind of criteria you need to filter, but those are very reasonable defaults eventually yeah, yeah exactly we, we just took the stance to not provide that right away we provided the means to do that and as time progresses if we get these questions more often we'll very likely have a component in the framework that you can configure that automatically sets the retry information or sure. automatically sets the entire stack trace Absolutely. So and then it's actually it's a, up, up for contribution. If somebody yeah. wants to do a pull request, that Absolutely. would be awesome. Yeah. That's the joy of having an open source uh, project, right? <laughs> you can exactly do yeah, what you exactly. like, right? And yeah. <laughs> open up issues, open up PRs. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look at them. That's definitely um, really appreciated always, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. You did tell me a little bit about um, the future of Dead Letter Q and uh, possibly implementing it within um, other messages, uh, specifically commands. Mm -hmm. um, what other things can we expect in the future? Are there any plans or um, are we still trying to refine what we've released recently? Yeah, what, what, uh, uh, to be very concrete, uh, what's already on the roadmap and coming is a Mongo storage solution for the dead yes. letters and JDBC storage solution for the dead letters. That's yeah. definitely going to come in 4.7. Uh, so the minor release seven of, of Exxon Framework 4. Um, I can imagine we provide a number of other NQ decisions or other NQ policies. We don't have that on the backlog right now, but I, I think they will come eventually. 
Um, another thing that's been crossing my mind, but nobody has asked it yet, is a means to see in your message handler whether you're dealing with that letter, yes or no. Oh, okay. Whereas that might be valuable information. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is something we can definitely build. Mm -hmm. Maybe that comes for 4.7, maybe later. Don't know yet. Um, and, and that lettering for other types of messages would be further out even. I'm not 100% sure whether we can, well, no, I'm, I'm just good. let's be honest. I'm never 100% sure. Who is? Uh, <laughs> right. I'm not 100% sure uh, when we that do That and it always depends. Exactly. Exactly. It always depends. <laughs> so that would be very far out. If people yeah. really need it, sure. But yeah, in a lot of scenarios, just doing a retry for a command or a query is easier. Yeah. But for events, your well, your asynchronous, your your own thread pool, perhaps uh, it's an entire own process that is consuming events and then fails. It's not something that's easily retried at that moment because you you need to do tons and tons of other stuff as well. So parking it is very reasonable in that space. Exactly. And perhaps less so for commands and queries. Makes sense. Yeah. Very good. Um, lots of really good information, Stephen. Thank you. Um, you it. are presenting a webinar on Dead Letter Queue specifically coming up pretty soon, right? Uh, can you tell everybody a little bit about it? When is it going to be? Is it uh, virtual, in person? Can you give a little bit of information cool. um, and how I, I people can join? In person. Yeah, that would be nice, <laughs> yeah, right? I, I, <laughs> All I, of us yeah, would. I would love to do it in person. <laughs> but uh, well, with, with, if there is one benefit of the whole COVID scenario is that doing things online has has been has had a great kick in the arse, <laughs> so it's been uh, increasing quite a lot, right? Yes. Uh, and you reach a lot more people, so that's that's good, that's great. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm I'm doing a webinar on the dead letter queue um, on the sixth of December, uh, four p.m. my time, and I'm very bad at time zones. Central Eastern. I think it's. So you yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> plus one GMT, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes, plus I'll one put, GMT. Yeah. That that I'll, I'll put yeah. exactly. I'll I'll put the information also on the um on the description of this episode that oh, yeah. way oh, folks yeah, that can just click on it yeah. easily. Very good. So December yeah. 6th, um yeah, mark your calendars, everyone. And uh I'm so how long is the webinar? Are you going to also show some code samples? Uh or is it mostly yes. going to be just a sort of the conversation that you and I have had, but on a visual mm. format. Yeah, yeah. It's also the conversation we have had, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, but then with slides attached, so I can actually show the API. I can show yeah. how you configure Perfect. this. Uh, so I will go that route as well. Great. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reserve a bit of time for slides, and I'll definitely reserve a bit of time for coding as well to show. Oh, wonderful. Working. Wonderful. Perfect. So, um, and it's a session of one hour, if I'm correct. Yes. Uh, yeah, so. from yeah, one hour. I uh, just checked it. Yeah, um, good. Yeah. And th there should be a time for questions, I guess, in the middle. But I am focused on the presentation. So I'll likely attach uh, a peer that has also worked on the dead letter queue. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe not. Who knows? Uh, that can, uh, on the fly, well, resolve some of those. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all the information, Stephen. And uh, until we talk next time, have a great one. Yeah, sure thing. This was great. Talk to you Thanks. soon. Bye. I hope you liked my talk with Stephen. Please join us on December 6th with uh, the webinar that Stephen is offering on Dead Letter Q. And after that, the episode after that, I, as I promised, is going to be the last portion of the state and future of Axonic. I hope you have a great time and until next time, happy coding.